UFC Fight Night, Islam Mahashev versus Bobby Green. Welcome to our main card prediction video for this UFC Vegas 49 event. Of course, we did our prelim video already. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you go ahead and do that. But to let us know who, to let you guys know who we are, we are Boxing MMA Picks. He goes by Zahn. I go by Harris. And in our usual fashion, we're giving you that fight-by-fight -fight breakdown and analysis from the betting perspective specifically. Here to talk about which fights are worth the value, which fights are not worth it, which underdog has the best shot at winning, and some parlay action towards the end as well. As I mentioned, we did the prelim card predictions already where the first seven of 12 fights are occurring. So we're going to get right into it in terms of our main card where the final five fights will be occurring. For our main card, we're going to start with fight number one, Armin Petrosian versus Gregory Rodriguez. Pretty good one to start the main card here. Gregory Rodriguez, we know he's undefeated in the UFC at 2-0. He's on a four-fight win streak in general. He just beat uh, Jun Young Park in October. Pretty good MMA fighter here. Um, you know, good stand-up, good grappling, a ton of power, uh, solid striking overall. He controls center of the octagon. Really good fakes and feints, really good jab, good combination. Oh, fantastic. On top of that, good head kick too. Um, so definitely the total package uh, in terms of just a fighter has good takedowns. Um, although a sa small sample size, in terms of UFC, he averages three takedowns per fight with 50% accuracy, 100% takedown defense as well. So again, only two fights to pull from in terms of sample size, but that does show you something. On top of that, he's a, a BJJ black belt. He has high level grappling. Uh, he has a lot of physical strength as well for this middleweight division. So pretty, uh, pretty capable and pretty complete fighter. Taking on Armin Petrosian though, who, who, who is a threat. He's, a, he's on a two-fight win streak. He's coming from the White Contender Series. He won in October. Pretty strong on the feet. Good in-and-out movement. Crisp, crisp striking. Fast striking as well. Good kicks. Good combinations. Has really good power. His Dana White Contender Series fight was a little telling, though. Uh, he was going up against Kolev uh, as the wrestler. And, and Kolev was able to shoot for the leg and land a takedown within the first 30 seconds of the fight doesn't really have the best takedown defense. Um, and, and that was a bit of a surprise to me in seeing that. This is a very tough fight. I think Armin Petrosian is, is a dangerous opponent, debut or not, very dangerous opponent to go up against. Um, you know, with it being Petrosian's debut, we might not see him perform to his ability. That's something that we talk about very often in terms of fighters making their debut. Secondly, Petrosian is the more likely of the two to fight from the outside. I think that's going to allow Gregory Rodriguez to put good pressure on. I think that's going to allow him to close distance. And of course, you know, leading into reason number three, I think that's going to lead to clinching opportunities. I think that's going to lead to wrestling opportunities for Gregory Rodriguez. And we know that he has the takedown as well as the grappling advantages. Um, I think he's smart enough to game plan around the advantages that he's going to have. But, I mean, he's very capable on the feet, so he might trust his hands. And on the feet, it really might just be about who catches who first. Um, so a lot of danger in this fight. I can't say, you know, throw the house on Gregory Rodriguez. Um, this fight can go in either direction. But I do think Gregory Rodriguez is the smarter pick, being somebody who is as capable on the feet, being somebody who has competed in the UFC before, and being someone who has a clear advantage in terms of grappling and wrestling. I, I think about those things. I see minus 160, although it's a threat, it has to make me think that Gregory Rodriguez uh, is a pretty valuable pick here. So I'm going Gregory Rodriguez. Yeah, I think this is a really hard fight, man. I think this is a 50-50, I think, or uh, close to it. I think five times out of 10, or uh, maybe five and a half, six times out of 10, Gregory gets this fight done. And I think, so that gives Armin a good chance to win this fight here, right? In my opinion here, when you look at how Armin fights, he, he always gets taken to the mat and then he survives. It comes out the second or third round and, and gets it done. So he's all, he's always on the mat survives. And then the fighter can't get him down. And then he knocks that fighter out. Um, his standup is not something to play with. And I think uh, he's going to have a far better standup in this fight. Just like I believe Gregory Rodriguez will have the far better grappling. 
Uh, so this is a this is a tough fight. I think this can go either way because when you look at Gregory Rodriguez, if he had good cardio, I think he get it. He would get it done seven, eight times out of ten. But his cardio is not good, and I think that's what that's what gives Armin that shot here. Because once he gets back on the feet, and if he can't get it to the mat, and he gets to his uh, he gets to that slow style where he's really tired, um, Armin. He's been there many times and he knocks people out. So I think there's a lot of value underdog alert here in Armin to get it done. Um, but I'm going to go with Gregory Rodriguez. I'm actually going to roll with him here. Um, he has really, really good jujitsu and Armin gets taken down um, by some, um, guys that aren't as good as this guy. And yeah, Armin survives, but I'm not sure he can survive with uh, this big guy, Gregory, on, on top of you. And, and Armin doesn't really have that takedown defense. He kind of, if you get in low on him, he kind of gives up the takedown. And then he tries to scramble back to his feet. But I think a fighter like Gregory Rodriguez kind of lay on top of him, utilize his weight. And I think that can save his cardio as well. So I think fighting a guy like Armin who doesn't really have any resistance with the grappling I think that can save Greg um, Rodriguez's cardio in this fight. So I'm going to go Rodriguez. And again, his stand-up is not, is not that bad. He can knock you out. He has the power in this fight with the hands uh, when it comes to the boxing. He might have the better boxing. He probably does have the better boxing. And what gives Armin that advantage is that movement, the kicks. Um, but you got to think Rodriguez may have the better boxing in this fight with the better jiu-jitsu. But again, the cardio is a concern. This can go either way. But yeah, I'm going to go Gregory to get it done. In a, in, a, in, a, in a hard fight to pick, but that jiu-jitsu, he should be able to submit him in that first round. Let's move on to fight number two and probably a harder fight to pick. Um, this is my candidate for fight of the night. We have Armin Sarukian taking on Joel Alvarez. Um, Armin Sarukian, four-fight win streak. He beat Christos Giagos in September. One of the best prospects in the UFC, in my opinion. I think uh, you know he lost the second pro fight but since then, we see his record here at 17 and two. His only loss since his second pro fight was to Islam Mahashev. Can't be too mad at that. Good boxing, good kickboxing. I like how he puts his punches together, good combinations, good in and out movement as well. Very quick as that counter puncher and has the power to go along with it. A uh, really good calf kicks, really good movement, really good takedowns specifically, solid top control. Very well-rounded fighter, like I said, you know, highly skilled, somebody who will be a serious contender at some point. Um, you know, he can keep up the pace for 15 minutes as well. I don't expect cardio to ever be a concern for him. Going up against Joel Alvarez, uh, somebody who really impressed me in his last fight, uh, he's on a four-fight win streak. He beat Tiago Moises in November. I think I went with Tiago Moises in that one, so I was really um, pleasantly surprised to see Joel Alvarez's performance and kind of thought to myself, this is somebody who I could bet on in the future. Um, I can provide a lot of similar commentary for Joel Alvarez. I think he's also one of the best prospects in the UFC, especially after how he beat Moises. Um, 16 of his 19 professional wins are via submission. Uh, a lot of first round finishes to his name as well, including the TKO from his last fight. Good movement on the feet, good jab, really nasty calf kick. Um, expect him to use a good amount of kicks in general to maximize the reach advantages that he will have here, four and a half inches in, in, uh, in, in reach. And uh, what is that, eight inches or so in height. So definitely going to have a lot of reach advantages here. He has good pressure. He has good power, picks his shots really well. Good diverse striker, good usage of knees as well. And I could potentially see that having an impact in this fight versus a shorter fighter who might go for takedowns. Um, again, you have to note Alvarez's size advantages for this division. I talked about it already, eight inches in height, almost five inches in reach. Um, and, you know, I really think this is one of the more underrated fights that we're going to get all year. I think, you know, both of these guys are top 10 material, if not top five material at some point in their career. Um, so going to be a really exciting matchup. Both guys are dangerous on the feet. I think Alvarez, of course, is the uh, more dangerous grappler with how many submission wins he has to his name. But I think Sarukian has the advantage of being more dangerous in terms of the wrestling, uh, which will work to his advantage uh, and which could be the deciding factor in this fight. I like Alvarez a lot, um, but I think Sarukian is slightly at a higher level due to being a more complete fighter, um, due, due to being a fighter with less weaknesses, uh, a fighter that could you know, more effectively win rounds 
with intentional wrestling approach as needed. Uh, and even on the feet, I'll be honest, for as much as Joel Alvarez impresses me on the feet, I like Saruki and more on the feet. I think he gives you more activity, more combinations, uh, whereas Alvarez, you know, kind of has his moments where he throws one shot at a time. Um, very close fight, like I said. Either fighter winning would not surprise me in the slightest, um, but I think Armin is just slightly on a higher level uh, right now. Um, so I'm going with Armin Saruki in here. It is a pick em, in my opinion. So minus 220 might be too steep on the side of Sarukian, but again, in making it, I'm going to pick Armin Sarukian. Okay. Uh, you said this was a hard fight, eh? One of the hardest to pick on this card? I think so. No way. I, listen, I'm going Armin Sarukian all day long. This, okay, so Joel Alvarez. Actually, I've been, I've been, if you actually look at my history here, I've been picking him to, to win these fights in that fight versus the last guy, the Brazilian. Um, I forgot his Tiago Moises. I said he's going to beat him easily. And I think he was the underdog. I said he's going to get it done easily. Um, this is a different, different beast, though. Armin Sarukin is a different beast here. Um, Alvarez loves to play off his back. He has a 0% takedown defense. Uh, so he's not going to put up any resistance. He likes to play off the back. Uh, but he's fighting a guy, Tiago, um, in um, Armin Sarukin, who has been there in the guard of black belts and has avoided submissions, has been able to um, keep his leg over their leg to avoid uh, the guard and, and, stay, and stay in dominant positions and avoid the submissions. And he makes a living in that area. Um, he, has, he has his leg over his leg in, in, um, in half guard. Puts, then he gets his leg over his leg. He just stays there. He doesn't need to get the full mount or side mount. He'll just ride that position. And Alvarez can't get up, can't submit him. So I think Saruki is just going to ride out some rounds here with, with his wrestling. Um, the height's big. There's a big height difference. But I think Armin has enough know-how in, in, the, in the striking here to keep to hold his own. Uh, and I think when it comes to the grappling, I think Armin's going to be the better grappler. I know Joel has the submissions, but I think Armin can avoid that and keep dominant position and dictate where the fight goes. And if you really look at... Um, with the uh, the main event, uh, what's his name again? Um, the main event fight, Khabib's boy, Islam Makachev. I think his hardest fight was against Armin, aside from his knockout uh, loss that he that he has on his record. That that was kind of a fluke knockout because if they fought again, hundred percent Islam wins that fight. But um, aside from that fight, his hardest fight was against Armin Sarukin. Three rounds, Armin got takedowns. He looked good. I think he won a he won a round on that scorecard as well. I, I believe. Um, so I like him in this spot. Yeah, definitely a higher level. He, uh, gave Islam a real, real fight. I don't think this is a hard pick to make here. I know, I hope a lot of money. I see a lot of people talking. My friend at work is saying Joel Alvarez. So I hope a lot of money goes in on Alvarez because I don't think he stands a chance against Saruki in here. I just think it's a different beast. So I'm going to go Armin here to get it done. And I do expect Saruki to become a top five fighter at some point in his career. All right, let's move on to fight number three. Uh, Ji Young Kim versus Priscilla Cachoeira. Cachoeira lost to Jillian Robertson back in December. That was just a bad matchup for her. Uh, pressuring, brawling type of fighter, heavy hands. She's going to stay right in front of you. Um, we learned in her last fight, she's pretty much a complete liability on the ground. Not the best takedown defense, not the best submission defense either. Um, but she's going up against Ji Young Kim who is on a two fight losing streak, who doesn't have any takedowns to her name. Um, you know, seven UFC fights, zero takedowns. So expect this one to stay on the feet. Uh, Ji Young Kim is introduced as having a boxing and jujitsu background, uh, pretty composed on the feet. She's light on her feet, good in and out movement, good striking IQ as well. Um, but more of a technician as opposed to a brawler. Um, definitely willing to engage when needed though. Um, mostly hands in her stand up, a bit more of a boxer than anything else. So I'm expecting, uh, you know, a clash of striking styles, technician versus brawler. Um, it makes it interesting because, you know, good news for Cachoeira, like I said, this fight is not going to the ground at all. Uh, and what also makes this interesting is that Ji Young Kim sort of just went up against the brawler um, when she went up against Molly McCann. And with Kim's style, she can't handle pressure at all. Um, you know, Molly McCann was able to light her up because she keeps the chin high the entire time. And because McCann was pushing forward, I expect Priscilla Cachoeira to sort of do the same thing. 
Um, you know, again, no ground threat, Kim leaving her chin up, Kachuwata having that stalking and pressuring style um, leads me to believing that Kachuwata could and maybe should win this fight. Alternatively, Kim could be the cleaner boxer for three rounds. She could win a boring decision. It's just that I see Kachuwata landing a fight-changing punch being a more likely outcome than I see Ji Young Kim being the cleaner boxer for three rounds. Um, so I'm going Priscilla Cachueta. I think power and pressure will be two key differences in this fight. And uh, Priscilla Cachueta is going to be my pick as a result. Yeah, this is a tough fight here. Um, Priscilla, the eye gouger versus uh, Ji Young Kim. Um, I like Jian Kim in this fight. I can't go with the eye gouger. Uh, did you see that last fight, Harris? Uh, the eye gouge? Yep. Uh, she was getting choked out. Try to eye gouge. Yeah, her. man. So I hope Jian Kim um, doesn't get her eye, eye eyes ripped out. But I'm going to go with her. I think that uh, Cachuera, though, has that power, that kind of unpredictability in her, in her striking. But she has no defense. I think she doesn't do anything defensively. And I think Kim just has a has at least some defense, and she does throw hands as well. So I just think overall, I think she's going to land the more strikes because she's actually defending. I think she's the better striker um, who has more reach. Oh, she has seven inches as well. She's going to have the straight punches versus Priscilla's um, wide punches. I'm going to go Gian Kim in a fight that I know is not going to the mat unless someone trips. Uh, both of these fighters um, that they, they haven't gone for it. There's zero takedown average. So they haven't, but they both have never went for a takedown. So we know this fight should stay on the feet. It should come down to who the, who's the better striker. Uh, it's close because they're both, they're both, tra um, I'm not going to say that, but they're both not the best. This is pretty low level, but I'm going to go G on Kim. I just think defensively she's a bit better. And I think she's just going to land the better strikes, the straighter punches, versus Priscilla, but Priscilla's live because one of those wild punches lands could change the fight. But I like Gian Kim. I think she's technically uh, arguably the better fighter in this spot. So I got to go with that. But this is women's flyweight. Anything can happen. Co-main event in that case, Misha Serkinov versus Wellington Tormen. Misha Serkinov is on a two-fight losing streak, 34 years old at this point. That does raise some questions. Uh, he lost a split decision to Christoph Jotko back in October, introduces having a BJJ and a wrestling background. On the, pe uh, on the feet, we see that he's a southpaw. Uh, he has a decent active jab, throws some solid kicks as well. Uh, expect him to fight from the center of the octagon, not really a lot of movement on the feet. In the stand-up, it's not really much more than that, though, right? A decent jab, a decent calf kick here and there, doesn't really offer anything else or, or even any regular level of activity on the feet, so kind of one-dimensional. We know he has takedowns, though. Uh, we know he has decent takedown entries. We know he has good top position. We know he's physically strong as well. Um, so, you know, definitely a fighter that plays to his strengths. Um, Wellington Terman, on the other hand, split decision win versus Sam Alvey back in August. We know it was only a split decision because he had two points taken away from him. So that tells you pretty much that was a dominant win versus Sam Alvey. Uh, considered a BJJ practitioner, um, you know, he's looking to take the fight to the ground usually in his fights good clinching ability good takedown ability in his own right some wrestling ability with his frame and of course good grappling as well in the stand-up he has heavy hands he has a hard jab bit of a slow striker um you know the hooks are powerful kind of lunges into it though uh and again kind of referring to that lack of striking speed he does lose exchanges to faster punchers um but i don't see that being the case versus misha Serkinov here Ultimately, we're looking at two fighters that are pretty unreliable um, from a betting perspective. So I wouldn't feel good really with, with either of these fighters. I wouldn't consider any of them um, on, on parlays. Uh, I might not even consider doing a straight up bet. I think Misha Serkinov is a fighter who maybe gets a little bit more respect than his current skill set calls for. I mean, getting this um, co-main event slot, and I know it's not because of Wellington Tournament, um, you know, he was having a hard time getting Christoph Jotko to the mat. Um, of course, Jotko has 80% takedown defense, um, but Terman has 100% takedown defense in five UFC fights. I would have to go back and see how each of those fights went, but 
statistically, um, the numbers are there. The physique is there for Wellington Terman as well. So I, I sort of anticipate uh, Sirkinov having some inability to land a takedown, sort of struggling to land that takedown in the same way he was versus Christoph Jotko. Um, so the question is, who's better on the feet? And to me, that answer is Wellington Terman. More diversity, more activity, more power, um, more of a threat on the feet. And I think age is also a factor here. Wellington Terman is 25 years old. He's somebody who is continuing to get better. He's somebody who might show us striking that we haven't seen from him before in this fight. Uh, whereas Misha Serkinov, 34, almost 35 years old, definitely on the decline. Um, that can't be somebody that I go with. I think Serkinov's strengths um, are nullified by some of Terman's strengths. And I think I'm going to have to go with the X factor being age here to uh, sort of trust that Wellington Terman has gotten better since his last fight. And if that's the case, Wellington Terman is going to be my pick, especially seeing that he is an underdog here. Yeah, a lot of value on the Wellington Terman. <clears throat> uh, when I look at Misha uh, Serkinov, um, he's, he's definitely uh, beat the better fighters. Uh, he's also fought the better fighters, in, uh, in, in my opinion here. Uh, when you look at his his uh, his his last fight versus uh, Christoph Jocko, that was a split decision. Uh, that that could have won either way. It's arguable. I I, I don't know. It could have won either way. I thought Jocko maybe did enough, but I could definitely. I wouldn't get mad if um, Serkinov got that decision there. Um, I've seen some wild decisions, so I wouldn't be surprised. But he looked decent in that fight. He went the three rounds. His cardio held up. Uh, he looked really bad in the Ryan Span fight. Looked really good in the Jimmy Crew fight. Um, knockout by Johnny Walker. Yeah, so he has some good wins on his record. But when I look at Wellington Terman, uh, he he doesn't really. Um, I'm not impressed. Like that that he had a split decision with Sal Alvey, and that alone, that's unbelievable. A split decision with Sam Alvey, and then he had a, a unanimous decision win versus Marcus Perez. Um, uh, a fighter that's not good at all. So when you look at uh, this guy's record in the UFC, he doesn't really have the wins. So I can't ride with Wellington Terman in this spot. As bad as Serkinov is, I think he's been a bit, I think he's been on a higher level than um, Wellington Terman. And Wellington Terman is going to be the smaller fighter in there, uh, six foot three to six foot. Um, Serkinov is going to be the stronger guy. And when you look at, I know he has 100% takedown defense, but no one really has brought the wrestling to him. And when you look at the guys that tried to take him down, uh, Marcus Perez tried to get him down. Uh, Bruno Silva tried to get him down. But they didn't really push that, that pace with the wrestling. Um, so I think that that number is going to get kind of beaten up this weekend. I think Sirkinov's going to be able to get him to the mat. I don't think his 100% defense is going to hold up. And I, I'm going to go with Sirkinov, but it's a tough fight because I think both guys are um, – like you say, you can't really trust these guys. Um, but I just think Serkinov has the better wrestling. I think his stand-up can hold up like it did in the uh, Krylov fight. Uh, Krylov is, is definitely a better striker than uh, than this guy, Wellington. I'm sorry, Christoph Jocko fight. I'm sorry. So his strike is definitely, Christoph Jocko's strike is definitely better than Wellington Terman. And Serkinov held up. So I'm pretty sure Serkinov can hold up in, in the striking exchanges here. He might even outstrike. Wellington Terman. That's how bad Wellington Terman is as, is as a fighter. Um, but I'm going to go Sirkinov here uh, to get this done. I think he's the better fighter. Um, but again, he, they're both chinny, so it could be a matter of who lands first. Um, but I think Sirkinov is the better fighter. I think he gets it done. Let's move on to the main event of the evening. We have Islam Mahashev taking on Bobby Green. Of course, Bobby Green stepping in for an injured Benil Dariush. Um, I won't spend too much time on this. I mean, we see Mah Mahashev as a huge favorite, minus 800. Bobby Green as a plus 550 dog. Basically, the question is, is Bobby Green worth it um, as an underdog? Is it worth throwing some money at him? We know Mahashev, complete fighter, combat sambo, good boxing, good jab, um, you know, patient stand-up, sets up the takedowns really well. Um, we know Bobby Green capitalizing on the moment you know stepping in for Benu Dariush like I mentioned a uh, great performance just two weeks ago versus Nazrat Hakparas um, pretty dynamic in the stand-up somebody who you mentioned just a couple of weeks ago 
you know, really coming into their prime later on in their career. So Bobby Green is definitely uh, in form, um, you know, marches forward when he needs to, keeps the hands down, relies on the speed and the reflexes in terms of striking defense. And it works really effective for him. Um, you know, you got to respect Green for taking advantage of an opportunity here. When we think about Mahashev's um, only loss, and you mentioned it when we were talking about Armin Sarukian, um, Mahashev's only loss, we saw him get clipped on the feet. Um, so he's not invincible by any means. He's not Khabib, right? Uh, you know, if there is one person that could clip him, it could be Bobby Green. But again, not spending too much time here. I got Mahashev all day here. Uh, too good, too much of a path to victory, too much wrestling, too much Khabib stuff. Uh, and I think he's going to have no problem implementing it like we've seen him do against a lot of people. Mahashev took on a striker in his last fight in, in, in Dan Hooker and had no problems there. So I'm anticipating no problems here as well, um, but it still is a fight and Bobby Green does have a puncher's chance. Um, otherwise, Islam Mahashev all day here. Yeah, this is, a, this is a good fight though. I'll take this fight. Um, but I actually think Bobby Green has a solid chance here to get this done. Uh, when you look at Islam Makachev, he hasn't really fought in the, uh, the, best, the best wrestlers. So he's fighting guys that he can get to the mat pretty easily. And Bobby Green, remember, he started out in, uh, in wrestling. This guy has wrestling. He knows how to wrestle. Uh, you look at his rest, the guys he's grounded out. Yeah, so I, yeah, so I expect them to get him to the ground, but I can see it getting harder as the fight goes on. This is a five-round fight. Bobby Green is the experienced guy uh, in this fight. So the longer the fight goes, it could benefit the, the usually it benefits the veteran. Um, Islam gets all the credit. He's, he's that good. He might be the best guy in the whole division. But let's not, let's look at the style. Let's look at the matchup stylistically. Striking wise, Islam cannot stand up with Bobby Green um, for a minute in each round. You would have to make it short. If he stands up with him for one minute, um, he can get pieced up in that minute. So, but, um, that's one thing you got to look at. And then you look at the wrestling. Islam can get him down. And Bobby Green, we're not sure, right? But if Bobby Green can keep it on the feet, he can knock Islam out. So there's a good story to this. Like Bobby Green can make a movie out of this. If he gets this win, he'd get a big contract here, right in the movie of this guy's career. Because it really would be a, a movie type situation if he wins this fight. Gets a, uh, gets a, a championship uh, fight uh, to, f to fight for the title. But um, it's a tough one because Makachev has taken down fighters that are better grapplers than Bobby Green. And one guy is Armin Sarukian, who's fighting today. And that's a really, really good wrestler. Really good wrestler. And you're going to see him fight before Makachev. And Makachev was able to utilize and take him down. So he's going to be able to take down Bobby Green, unfortunately. And he's going to win this fight. He should get this done. But Bobby Green definitely has a shot. I give him a 5 10% chance of winning this fight. Uh, Islam, 90%. Um, so I'm going to go Islam to get it done. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Bobby shows up here. He just has to keep it on the feet. Easier said than done. But his striking is far better. But um, yeah, Islam's ground game, jiu-jitsu, sambo, all that stuff, grappling, everything grappling. Uh, he's going to be able to overwhelm Bobby Green here. So Islam's my pick. On top of all that, this is a catchweight fight uh, as well at 160 pounds. Um, so expect a less weight cutting for Islam. Could be stronger. Um, and, and we'll see if that's a factor in this fight as well. But let's take it to Vegas. Uh, the main card, a little tougher than the prelim in terms of trying to find some good value. Um, let's start with an underdog pick on the main card. Who are you taking a look at? Uh, on, on the main card, man, I didn't even... Yo, I didn't even take any underdogs on that main card, I think. Uh, let's see. But if, you, but if you ask me, like, if you ask me, though, like, what I think is a a flag fight that you can look at as far as underdog. Uh, man, only Armin Petrosian. I can see Rodriguez getting tired and uh, Armin Winsley in the later rounds. But aside from that, all the other favorites on the main card are definitely going to win. <laughs> <laughs> all right underdog pick uh, i will be uh taking a look at wellington terman uh, i guess we'll see uh, how good he is compared to misha Serkinov, but i'm looking at terman at a plus 100 uh, even money underdog 
Uh, and in terms of some favorite picks or, or some parlay action, who are you uh, considering? Man, this is super hard, eh? No, we got to probably add, like, we don't want to give these guys a forced ticket. We got to probably add some prelims, man. Like, look at that. This is horrible. Like, this is going to be, we don't want to, I could do it. I could do it. You want me to do it? I'll do it. Main event. Okay, let's do it. Main event. Armin Sarukin. Got that one? Yep. And let's roll with, um, oh, man. This is super hard, man. Okay, let's go with uh wow I'll, wow okay is that Makich- no that's not even worth it is yeah add is that Makachev and let's add um wow this is tough let's add um let's add Sirkinov. All right, so adding Sirkinov to that, that would be a plus 197. So for our bigger betters, $100 will return 297. Um, sorry, for $100 will return them for the bigger betters, putting 250 on it, that would return 742. Um, I get exactly what you mean. Uh, I, I can't allow myself to force a third fight there. Um, so I'm really only looking at the two, Armin Sarukian and Islam Mahashev. I know it's not the biggest money, um, but again, we're going for wins sometimes more than the money. $100 would only return $162. $250 would only return $405. Um, to Zan's point, I think you would sort of have to um, consider an underdog as well. If I was looking at some kind of underdog to include, I mean, I can see myself doing Brahimaj. Uh, to bring that up to a plus 106, or I can see myself doing Jonathan Martinez to make that a plus 129. I could potentially see Terrence McKinney as the dog and making it a plus 224. Um, or I would potentially consider Ignacio Bahamondes uh, to make the ticket a plus 136. So not too much value on the main card. I think Sarukian and Makashev are good money. I think you might want to consider somebody on the prelim to add to that in addition. Um, but you know what? Let's officially sign well, up. Hold on, hold on. I, honestly, uh, let me just lay this one out. You don't have to post it in the comments, but if anyone listened this far, I, I actually like ticket-wise, full card-wise, I like Jonathan Martinez, Ignacio Bamahandes, Armin Sarukian. You could throw Islam Makachev to put a cherry on top, but I like them to get it done as far as a full card ticket. So let's uh, highlight that too, because it is a uh, pretty good value. And I do completely agree with those picks. Uh, $100 would return 334 for the bigger betters. $250 will return 835. So some really good value there um, for four fights that I think we both feel the exact same about. Um, so it could be some money there. Definitely could be some money there. Let's officially sign off on that note though. Of course, let us know how you feel in the comments about our parlays, about our main card picks, about our prelim picks, about who your picks are, or of course, if you want additional commentary and additional insight, we're more than happy to have that discussion in the comments with you as well. Uh, Of course, make sure you subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video and uh, just continue to support the channel. You know, share it with anyone that is looking for some additional UFC opinion. Of course, we do our boxing predictions as well. Um, some, good, some good prediction videos coming up in that arena as well. So uh, really looking to help you guys make money, think things out from specifically that fighting perspective or that betting perspective, I should say. Um, so, you know, support the channel. We would definitely appreciate it. But officially signing off, he goes by the name of Zahn. I go by the name of Harris. We are Boxing MMA Picks, and this has been the UFC Fight Night Islam Mahashev versus Bobby Green main card prediction video, aka UFC Vegas 49. Um, So in our usual fashion here at Boxing MMA Picks, let's get this money. Let's do it.